Okay, so is this in standard form? No, right? So therefore, our main objective in this case is we need to make sure that we rewrite it in standard form. And we understand that standard form, we're going to have to have create those binomial squares. So that means we're going to have to um, complete the square to create the binomial squares. So the first thing I'm going to do is group my x's and my y's. And then I'll get the 4 to the other side. Then, remember guys, we cannot complete the square when we have coefficients other than 1. So I have to factor out the 9, factor out this negative 4, Now I'm at the point where I can complete the square. Right Now I have this quadratic inside the parentheses that I want to create to be a perfect square trinomial. Because if I can create a perfect square trinomial, I can factor it down to a binomial squared. And that's exactly what is in my formula, our binomial squared. So we need to find the value b that, or find the value c that we call that completes the square. So to do that, we just take the middle term, negative 2, divide it by 2, and square it which gives us a lovely 4. Here I take negative 2 divided by 2, square it, which gives me 1. Now just remember, guys, when you're adding something into an equation, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, right? So I'm just going to like put this 4 over here and immediately put them on the other side once I do it. So that 4 is that 4. But I added a 4 here on the left side, so I'm going to add a 4 on the right side. But again, remember, I'm not really adding a 4 here, am I? I'm adding a 4 that's being multiplied by a 9. So that means I need to multiply this one by 9. Then we have a negative 4 times y squared minus 2y plus 1. But again, I'm not really adding a 1. I'm adding a 1 that's being multiplied by a negative 4. That means I need to multiply this 1 by a negative 4. At least now in this point, I have created two binomials squared, which I can factor down into x minus 2 squared minus 4 times y minus 1 squared equals, let's do a little math here, uh, 4, negative 4 just goes to 0. 4 times 9 is 36. Okay. Now, this is kind of like the first problem I did. right? It's almost in standard form, but we want to set it equal to 1. So we divide by 36, divide by 36, and we have x minus 2 over 4 squared, right? because 9 over 36 is 1 fourth. Minus 4 over 36 is going to be 1 ninth. <sighs> now we're done. And now what you guys can see is it's kind of easy for us to identify the center. So in this case, what I'll do is I'm just going to identify all the important pieces, and then I'll just do a, like a rough sketch. So the center is at 2 comma 1. Uh, a squared is equal to 4. B squared is equal to 9. Again, another example when A squared is not larger than B squared, right? But A squared's in front. And A squared's under the x, so therefore I should have a horizontal major axis. Um, let's see, C squared is going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared, so that's going to be 13. So let's say, does that mean A is 2? b is 3, c is square root of 13. Um, let's go ahead and just do a rough little sketch here. So my center is at 2, negative 1. I have a horizontal transverse axis. Okay, So that means my vertices are going left and right from the center. So my vertices are going to be a value of 2 going left and right from the center. So just for keep this short, guys, I'm just going to do I'm not going to simplify it. It's going to be 2 plus or minus 2 minus 1. Right? You're adding the 2. You're adding the a to the h coordinate of the center. Does that make sense? Right? And then obviously you do that. Your 2. So that means your two answers are going to be 4 comma negative 1 and 0 comma negative 1. Those are your two vertices. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 0, negative 1. There's your two vertices. Then let's do the foci. Now the foci I'm not going to simplify. That's going to be 2 plus or minus square root of 13, negative 1. And again, you guys could think of square root of 13 as somewhere in between uh, 3 and 4. So 1, 2, 
three, four. Four psi. One, one, two, three, four. Foci. And then the asymptotes, I will just write that since it's a uh, horizontal transverse axis, the equation is y equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k. So just plugging in my values, my b over a is going to be plus or minus 3 halves times x plus 2. Where's my k? k is what? Plus 1. But let's not worry about the asymptotes. Let's just sketch a graph. Yes? A squared is 4 when the a be 2. So yeah. the vertices would be one closer. Huh? The vertices would be like 1 away instead of 2 away, since that's a squared, not a. Right, so a is 2. And then the vertices, this is 4. No, but it's the, di the vertices is the distance from the center. So the no, dis wait, is it, I thought A was the major axis. No, major axis is 2A. Ma ma A is the distance from the center to your vertices. right? But, but one thing to remember is what we call, talked about last class period is the length of the major axis. The length from vertice to vertice is 2A. right? And that was the same thing as like the major axis or transverse axis. Yes? Uh, it should be in the first quadrant. It's 2 comma, I wrote the center. Oh, it's 2. I, why did I go down to negative 1? You're right. So that should be um, 2 comma positive 1, right? Yeah, so it's up there. Well, why didn't you say something? Good catch. Thank you. So those are all 1. So that's all fine, but my graph is all bad, right? Well, let's just move everything up. Looks something like that, right? Any other questions? Everybody feels if I gave them an equation, they might be able to find the vertices, the foci? Maybe. Okay. Well, you guys got homework. Got homework to try.